So we're talking about how gas molecules travel in straight lines until they run into another molecule or the container. So we can look at the average distance that a particle travels before it runs into something. And this is known as the mean free path, the average distance between collisions. The mean free path will get shorter when the pressure increases. Um, because one way to increase the pressure here would be to make the volume smaller, right? Now we've got the same number of particles at the same speed in a smaller container. They're going to run into things more frequently. The mean free path is going to go down. Just to give you some scale, if a nitrogen molecule was the size of a golf ball, it would travel about 40 feet between collisions. So that kind of you know, gives you an idea of what the gases are doing. So there's two processes by which gases spread out. Um, the first one is called diffusion. And this is where gas molecules spread from a high concentration to a lower concentration. And being a mom of five boys, there was a lot of farting and talking about farting in my house, right? So the smell of a fart is a great example of diffusion. Okay, somebody lets one in the corner and they smell it, but people on the other side of the room don't smell it right away. It takes a little while, but eventually it does fill the whole room, doesn't it, right? So gases will spread out until the concentration is uniform. Effusion, which, you know, the words are very similar, diffusion and effusion. This is the process by which a gas escapes through a small hole into a vacuum. The rates of both of these uh, things is dependent on the root mean square average velocity of the particles. The faster the particles are moving, the faster they will diffuse, the faster they will effuse. And so if we're looking at gases at the same temperature, then we can observe that the rate of gas movement is inversely proportional to the square root of its molar mass, which leads us to this equation right here. This is one you should be able to use, but again, you don't need to memorize this. So the ratio for the rate of gas A to B is equal to the square root of the inverse of their molar masses. Because if, if rate A is large compared to B, that means that the mass of A is small compared to B. So that's why it's inverted. If you have two balloons, you know, same brand of balloon, uh, filled with the same filled to the same size. You've got one that's helium and one that's air or nitrogen. Air is mostly nitrogen. You can observe that the helium balloon will shrink faster than the air or nitrogen balloon. And that is because the helium atoms are moving faster and so they will effuse, they will get out of the tiny little holes in the balloon faster. They're smaller. Mm -hmm. At the same temperature, nitrogen molecules are moving more slowly than helium molecules because they're bigger, right? And the small ones move fast. So this is an illustration of effusion. So we've got this container with a wall here. There's a little hole in the wall that's large enough for gas particles to get through. Originally, all the gas particles are on the left and on the right, there is nothing. So on the right, there was a vacuum. There was nothing there. And my experience with vacuums, like a vacuum cleaner, right, is it's causing a vacuum and it sucks things into it, right? So my natural thought about this is, oh, well, if this is a vacuum, it's sucking the gas out of the other side. No, no, it isn't. Not at all. 
the gas is over here completely oblivious to the fact that there's a vacuum over there, even though there's a hole. These gas particles are just bopping around until they happen to make a head-on, straight-through-the-hole path. Then they go through, and then they're going to be kind of trapped over here for a while. In the meantime, more particles are going to randomly hit the hole and go through. And that is how the gas expands into the vacuum. Just depends on the speed of those particles. The speed of the effusion depends on how heavy the particles are. Because a smaller gas like helium moving around much faster than something like xenon, which is a big old truck just plodding along. Okay. Any questions? Yeah. So I guess the difference because it, it's not moving from a higher to a lower concentration because it's just by happenstance that it goes to this normal, while diffusion is more so like it intentionally moves from one. To so the yeah, what is it, the difference between diffusion and effusion? So effusion is where we have this barrier with a little hole. Diffusion works very similarly. You've got a whole bunch of gas particles in, in this one corner of the room, say, and they're just going to be moving in directions, right, randomly. And so some are going to hit the walls near the corner that they're in, and others are going to take off straight across the room. And they're all going to keep bouncing around like that until in not too long, they'll be spread out throughout the whole room. But effusion is, is a little bit different because of the hole. Yeah. And this depends on temperature and the size of the atom, or what is the difference? It does not. De it depends on the mass of the atom. Mass of the atom. Now, if you increase the temperature, the particles are moving faster. It depends on the velocity of the particles. Oh. So if you do something that causes the particles to move faster, like heat it up, then they will effuse faster. Any other questions? Find the ratio of the effusion rate of hydrogen gas to that of krypton gas. So all of this stuff we're talking about today with the equations and things, this is a small deal, OK? Stoichiometry, I guess I should take that back, because we talked about gas sto stoichiometry. That's important. This root mean square velocity, rates of effusion kind of stuff is a small deal. So if you need to choose things to skip, should skip this one. Anyway, we're going to do this problem. We want the ratio of the effusion rate of hydrogen to krypton. So we're using this equation. The rate of A over rate of B is equal to the square root of the molar mass of B over the molar mass of A. So that means that the rate of hydrogen to the rate of krypton will equal the square root of the molar mass of krypton to hydrogen. This is not going to allow us to calculate the actual velocity or rate, but we can compare the two gases. So the units for these technically should be in kilograms per mole, but because we're dividing, the kilogram part's going to cancel out, and so it's okay to use grams per mole. So krypton is 83.80 grams per mole. In the root mean square velocity equation, we cannot use grams because the units won't work out. So here, the grams cancel and the moles cancel. So we end up with the square root of 83.8 divided by 2.016, bless you. It's an official number, 2.016, bless you. I guess because of my 
molar masses, that would be the correct number of sigfigs. So the ratio of the rate of effusion of hydrogen to krypton is 6.447 to 1. So hydrogen effuses 6.447 times faster than krypton. Any questions? And then we found the 83 blah, blah, blah on the periodic table. Yep. Yeah. yeah, these these are just elements, but hydrogen is a diatomic element, right? And so this said hydrogen, and we have to recognize that hydrogen is diatomic. I had a great question yesterday. Why isn't krypton Kr2? Well, because it's not a diatomic element. And why not? Because it's not one of those seven. We start at the seven and make a seven. The noble gases, they are like the noble people in Europe, the nobility, right? They're too good for the rest of us, right? They're not gonna come have lunch at your house. They're too fancy, right? The noble gases are too fancy to interact with any of the other elements. For a long time, it was believed that they didn't form any compounds. Yeah. Not diatomic. Not. Noble gases are not diatomic. Yeah. Anybody else? 